sólida y mi vida aquí sobra. Son sembar, no se vende.
coaches. And good evening. My work here. That young kid is a regular in the office, and one day, buddy, you're going to be the next council member of this neighborhood. And, and the work that you do, I know, is going to be beautiful. Thank you for speaking up. Um, Today's a special day, not just because we're here in this room, but for me too. It makes me think about the ancestors that we're all connected to. Specifically, my Mexican ancestors. Today's El Desiseis, an independence day. And I say that because the ancestors that we think about aren't just the ancestors that we bring with our own history. It's the history of this land as well. In Sunset Park, in Brooklyn, in New York, the Lenape people were the first nation of this entire area. And we think about them, and we should be thinking about them, and the decisions that we have to make together as a community. So let's just bring those stories untold, and the connections that we have to our own ancestors. And as we think about those hungry for justice in Mexico that led to a revolution and brought independence, they live in me, they live in you, and they live in us. So let's just keep that in mind as we move forward and think about what is ahead of us. Now I know that a lot of you are coming with so much anger or excitement or frustration and questions. The space that I want for us tonight, and I want you to help me make this happen, is for understanding. And I have a presentation before you that when you leave, you'll have all the understanding that I have. And I want you to have that because it is right. It is right for you to have that information so that we can continue to make decisions for our community because that's what we've been doing. Not just us, the people who are alive and well right now in our community that have the privilege to be here today. And I know that not everyone got to be here today, but I hear you and I see it. Thank you. And so it's going to be up to us to talk to each other after this presentation so that the communication can continue. Because it's not over after today. How many of you are worried about the future of Sunset Park region? Oh yeah, we are. We are Presente! I want to say... How many of you love Sunset Park? Part two, and that's why I've invited you here for this talk as we think about Sunset Park's future. You see, I believe, and our work together in the last six years as a council member, I hope has demonstrated this that I believe that we can work together to build that, to build community power, to shape our future. And to do that, to do that requires every part of this conversation to happen openly and transparently. And I want you to take a, no a notice about what Seth Seth said and the community board has done. There is no rezoning, and yet we are here talking about a rezoning that has yet to get filed. That is the power of our community, and through my office, we've been able to stop that because of you. So thank you so yes. much for standing with me for this work as we continue to talk to you. But not everybody wants us to have a discussion. And so, you have probably seen in the news some rumors and oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. deals being made and things being done that couldn't be farther from the truth. And I want you to hear that from me directly from my mouth. That is not true. That is false information. And for us to continue this conversation, you need to believe that. The work that we do continues to have whoever did this, and I really don't care who did it, but this is the kind of energy that destroys our ability to stay united because the forces outside of us want us to be divided and I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to get bullied by anyone so that I can have a conversation with you. It's not going to happen today, it's not going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to happen ever. Because here's the thing, this article talks to us about me rushing to make a decision on any way, in any way, in any direction. And I have to tell you, and I hope you believe me when I say this, I have never 
felt rushed in this question. I have never felt rushed. And I want you to feel that same power. Because that's the truth. I've never felt rushed. And so the reports that I'm going to walk you through today are really about that moment and time that I've taken, not rushed, to understand what's before us. And so I asked a delay because we needed to analyze everything. And I asked for a delay to study it, to reflect back to you what I'm hearing, the conversations that I've had in community board meetings, at my office, in your home, on the ferry, oh, yeah. on my bike, yeah. forever. I'm having conversations with you about what you want. So oh, tonight yeah. is about you being reflected in this conversation. But we've been here before, Sunset Park and beyond. <laughs> We have been here before. Let's think about SBMT, the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal, just blocks away from here. The city of New York, the mayor and EDC, had an idea about what to do there. But guess what? We said no. And we spent six months sitting down and talking about the things that we need. And we reshaped how this whole proposal happened so that jobs, good jobs, labor could come in and do the work that they could do at SBMT so that an RFP reflected the values at the front of an RFP at EDC that had never happened before. So that any business that wants to come to New York City and develop here gets to hear and read directly about what community wants. That never happened before because we took our time and we didn't rush and we said no. Let's talk about schools. In this district, there are seven new schools coming to district. Two impact overcrowding because we know even before I got elected that this is one of the most important things that this community could ever do and guess what seven schools are coming oh yeah seven schools have been approved and they're in construction right now and they're providing us an opportunity to educate our community and our kids for the future that's us working together oh, yeah. affordable housing we approved affordable housing, 100% affordable, with a brand new library. 51 units of affordable housing. That's us, and that's working with you, our community. We did that together. And then finally, participatory budgeting. Over $20 million of ideas have come into fruition in terms of the budget, and some of those projects you're starting to see now in our parks, in our schools, technology, to ensure that our kids have the best possible outcome for their education. Those are your ideas that you decided on, and there are more people voting in this district than any other district in the entire city. Thank you. Keep coming out. And there are more people voting in participatory budgeting than the people who elected me for the Democratic primary. That's the power of community. That's the power of you, and I want you to keep coming out to support. So finally, we are a community that wants to build up our community and our neighborhood. And that requires vision and resources and patience and political power. It requires a lot. And we know that because you experience it every day. I love our neighborhood, Sunset Park. Yeah, we do. We love Sunset Park, right? We are a community of immigrants and working families and small businesses and social justice warriors, climate justice warriors. We're a community that's diverse and beautiful. But we also have some challenges. And I want to reflect back to you some of those challenges that we see that are very real, that are causing the pain that we're feeling and that I'm hearing and that I'm seeing with all of you as we talk about this. Our rents are going up. Oh yeah, that's one. And we are all feeling that pressure. No matter what corner of Sunset Park and the district, you are feeling your rents going up. Oh, yeah. I hear you. I heard you. Our people are being displaced. I'm talking to housing advocates on the ground, and they're saying that by the dozens, and even more, on a daily basis, and many of them are coming to my office for help and support because their landlords are trying to evict them because they want a higher price in their housing unit, whether it's a three-family home or a 16-family home. And it's not just the prices, the housing is falling apart. And that is what I'm hearing over and over again from you that I understand is an important thing for us to address. 
Our landlords, many of them, not all of them, many of them are neglecting our people, us, many of you in this room today, and they're harassing you. We have some housing challenges. We also have jobs and education challenges. We're not building the pipelines for our communities. And I'm not satisfied with anything that the city has given us this, up until this point. And so the things that we're doing are at the margin. When we think about EDC, when we think about SPMT, these are good things that we are seeing today and the promise for jobs, but there's a pipeline here that has not yet impacted our immigrant community that don't speak English as their first language, that have education that needs more so that they can be trained for the jobs that are coming. And that is a big concern. Because we have wind power coming to SPMT, the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal, and green jobs. We just passed massive legislation, some of the most progressive and aggressive, thanks to many of the people in this room fighting for it, so that we can actually upgrade commercial buildings with jobs. But the question is, are they going to come to Sunset Park? And we need to connect our kids to that future. And that is one of the most important things that I've seen today as a lack of opportunity for our, our kids. There is no sense that we can say that our kids are going to 160, PS 169 or 124, that they're going to get any connection to jobs. None. But let's talk about the manufacturing that is around Industry City. We're not too far away from it here today. Our waterfront, our working waterfront, the waterfront that this community has been protecting for so long, is losing companies to other cities, across the harbor, because it's too expensive here. Our manufacturing spaces are competing with tech companies and office workers, and office companies that are coming in. And guess who loses? We do. Because it's our people who are working in those manufacturing. And I know because I go and I see them. And some of you are here today. The thing is that speculation, what does that mean? It means that people, <clears throat> companies, developers are buying property to transform them and then sell them. To transform them in their vision, not ours. And that drives everything up. Taxes, cost of rent, not just for our housing, but for the businesses on the other side of Third Avenue. And I heard that from you. So overall, we need to create jobs and opportunities to support our families here at Sunset Park. Well, guess who's talking about this? Guess who has a vision about this? That's Industry City. Oh, yeah. Industry City has a vision. Industry City has a vision. Sunset Park is not for sale. Sunset Park is not for sale. Let me just very respectfully ask everybody here 
because there's some folks that don't want me to get through this presentation, and I know that you have a lot of important things to do after this, like eat or take oh care of your kids. And so I want to respect your time, but if your neighbors are not going to respect your time, then we can all just go home right now. So uh. if you can, raise your hand if you want me to continue to finish this presentation. Me. Look around, neighbors. Look around, neighbors. Look around, neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. That, that question... That question was not about supporting anything. That was about understanding. I'm not going to talk over you. I'm not going to talk over you. Because guess what? If this happens again in this presentation, we're going we're gonna to stop. And then, and guess what? Guess what? We're going to stop. I'm just letting you know what's going to happen so you can have expectations that are understood. We're going to stop. And no one is going to bully me into not connecting with their neighbors. And so I will find a way to communicate Thank you. So in your city, they are a privately owned property. But they have a lot of property. And they have a massive commercial. These guys. Alright guys, shut up for a second. Let him talk. We want to hear. Shut up. Let him talk to what he had to say. They're a commercial and landlord property. They're just down the street, not too far away from here. And they Old buildings that were built in 1990. That's how old these buildings are. They're historic. And they bought them. Oh my God. Now, they have bought and invested tens of billions of dollars in them. Got lots of space. 16 buildings. 5.3 million square feet. 5.3 million square feet. That's massive. Some as tall as 170 feet. Now, I want you to just see the comparison. What we're talking about here, and why it's important that we're here to listen to each other, not talk over each other. We have comparisons here. The Freedom Tower is three million. We have, uh, sorry, we have. Uh, well, I just want to get this slide up. Get the comparisons. I just want to make sure that. So you know Brooklyn Army Terminal. Two buildings, four million square feet. Industry City is 16 buildings, five, over five million square feet. This is massive. This determined that this requires us to all understand what's in front of us. And I know some of you do, but this is how I think about it in terms of how much space we're looking at. There's so many things happening here at Industry City. Job training, office space is sprouting. Retail, events, you're seeing that happen over and over again at Industry City. There's a transformation happening there. And when they arrived in 2013, there were 150 businesses. This is the smallest, by the way. There's like 400 more businesses there. And in 2013, you had, when they arrived, 150 businesses with 100, 1,800 jobs. As of this year, now, this is in relationship to a letter that was sent to me and the community board. They now have this many jobs. This is, let me get through the presentation. This is, a le this is from a letter that was given to me and the community board about this year. This is from Industry City. This is now my presentation. This is them. Can you pay attention to that? That's right. That's right. Guys, stop. This means that there is a massive change in how and what is happening at Industry City. And we're already seeing it without a rezoning. Without a rezoning. And guess what? We're also talking about people who have businesses there that are from Sunset Park. And there's people here who work at Sunset Park. And those are our neighbors as well. And so what I want to just give you a sense and picture of is that this is a transforming, a massively transforming community. But guess what? Okay, so I'm going to say this. There are kids in this room, and if you use those language again, I'm going to ask you to leave.
said it. No, 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 no. No, you said it. I'm going to do this again. I want, I just want an affirmation. I'm, no, we're not going to be rushed. I'm not going to be rushed. I'm not going to be bullied. And we're not going to do this right now. Yes, I'm going to ask you to leave. I'm going to ask you to leave. Let him finish. Yes. Absolutely. Because our neighbors want to understand. Yes. Let's go forward. Let's go. There's a door. Okay. Let's talk about what is allowed right now at Industry City. Let's walk through this. Right now, with the current zoning, and many of you understand the zoning that is there right now, it's manufacturing zoning. M3, if that means any sense to you. These are the things that are allowed. Manufacturing, retail. You have office, <laughs> events, and job training. These are the things that we just reviewed. So next slide. Oh my God. We have the Innovation Lab, and I want to say that I have been part and supporting the work that they've been doing at the Innovation Lab, and the partners below there have been doing their best to try to figure out this question about a pipeline. Okay. They have statistics that really talk about what they did in the last year, and I want you to look at it. 114 jobs. 80% of those jobs are jobs that went into a industry city. The other side is that you had 36% of the, or about 40% of them go to Sunset Park residents. Something is working there, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. But there is a vision there that is worth understanding and highlighting because those are our neighbors. Next slide. So why are we here? So why are you here? Wow. So if Industry City, and everybody there, Innovation Lab, and the stuff you're doing, and the, the, the loans that were taken to come in and do this work, it's happening, you're seeing it. Why are we here? We're here because they have been working on something called a rezoning. This rezoning, in whatever language, in whatever language that you have, in whatever language, it's confusing, so we're going to walk through it. Let's go through what an actual rezoning looks like. And the best way that I can describe it to you, whether you're a land use lawyer or not, they want to change the rules about how to use their property. It's their property. They own it. It's not EDC property. It's industry city property. But it's all Private rules. It's property. all rules. It's city. Yeah, you go, but, these, yeah. but there are rules that are designated by the city. Our rules. Rules about how to use zoning. Here's what they want. Next slide. Because we have to ask this question. What do they want? Because guess what we're going to do? We're going to compare it to the things that we just talked about that are making everyone angry, that are making people frustrated. And I want you to understand the analysis of how we can actually compare the things that they want to the things that we want. No concession. Yeah. Move on to the next slide. They want more space. <laughs> Renee, is there a slide before this?
essentially their application. They want large retail stores, big box. They want hotels. No! Next slide. Can we go to the next slide, please? They want retail streets. So you've already kind of seen what's been happening if you've walked this city. You guys, please stop talking. I need to get through this presentation. And then you can do whatever you want afterwards. Please. Yeah, you can have our package. They want. This is a picture of what they want in their application. We've distilled it to really kind of respond to how people are thinking about the two cities rezoning. And this is what they want. Next slide. So here's my, my, my questions that I really want you to understand and they're distilled because we're trying to communicate to folks. Pay attention here. We talked about education issues. We want to understand, is Industry City's proposal impacting and how is it impacting education in our neighborhoods? I think it's a maybe. Maybe. Local hiring. You already saw that we have an innovation lab that is doing some work. Could this be positive? Potentially, maybe. Let's talk about rent and eviction. Let's talk. Let me walk you through what I think is possible. Will rent and evictions, is there an impact? Let me explain what the no means. There is nothing that's happening. Guys, there's nothing that's happening in this proposal to impact it in a positive way. That's right. It's all positive. There's nothing positive that I believe in the research that we've done with our team that says that saying yes to this proposal will say good things about rent and eviction. That's true. <laughs> housing quality. Let's talk about the housing quality that we've seen today that's happening today in our community. Housing quality. We don't think that this rezoning has any positive impacts on housing quality. And then finally, will this rezoning protect our manufacturers? No! No! Hi. No. 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 Yes! No! No. Actually, this one is no. 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 Okay, next slide. So here's my question to all of you. Should we rezone with the plan that we have in front of us? No! no. I agree.
a loan to pay, and they're like any other capitalist animal, they're going to have to pay those loans back. And guess what? We want any problem. opportunity to do that. No, that's their problem. No corporate welfare. So I'm going to give you everything. Let's talk about private investment. We'll continue. We'll have no influence over Anderson City, who's a neighbor. And guess what? Our challenges will continue to be unaddressed. So let me walk through some of those challenges and how I think we can address them. Next slide. Oh my God.
And there are some incredible experts in this room and beyond that really can think about how to protect the working waterfront is it being done right now with the current zoning that we have today? Which means that we need to change that. By creating a manufacturing hub at Ocean City. Next slide. It's already sold for M3. It hasn't been sold. It doesn't make any sense. The work that we have to do for this project is probably the most inspiring part of what I think about our youth that need access to these jobs. I think that we need to have a public technical high school at Industry yeah. City that embeds itself into the city and allows us to have our kids a future that we want. This for me is not only exciting as, as someone who I think believes in the work that our public education, but the fact that we have seven schools coming to, to, to Sunset Park and, and Red Hook and the rest of the district. This only makes sense that our number eight, our lucky number eight, can be a public technical high school. And they have built one at the Brooklyn Navy Yard that I want to invite you all to go look at. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And it's a great model. Next. We need more funding for tenant organizing and tenant protection. Yeah. This one thing, if you take away nothing, because 
You don't want to listen. Make this your thing that you want to do. Connect to the solar cooperative because that is happening here in our community at Industry City. Just be a technical high school 
for kids. This has to be for our adults. So that at nighttime, our adults can use it as well. We want investment in small businesses and working properties. We want to invest in stabilized housing. These things the mayor can bring with the city agencies. And we will make that request. We will make that request of the mayor to ensure that the certificate of no harassment comes to Sunset Park. So that if anyone is harassing us in our communities, in our homes, we will not be allowed to build. That is something that we need here in, in Sunset Park. Yeah. We also need the right to counsel to ensure that everyone is guaranteed a lawyer in our neighborhood. And we're not part of that first. Uh, we're not part of that effort. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to fund tenant organizing. And we want Industry City to do this work as well with us. Sunset Park can do the work. We want them to understand.
and we have made it what it is today. And now they want to take it from us. And we can't let them go. Okay? And I want everybody here to remember, voting day, remember who walked out that door. Remember who Okay, we have to stick together. We have to do this, what we do all the time. Stick together and fight for what we believe. Yeah. Okay, because they can't take it from us if we stand up. They've already done it. Where have they done it? They've done it in Bushwick. They've done it in Lower East Side. I, in my block alone, they have built about five buildings. None of those buildings are for us. Okay, I can't afford to live in any of those buildings. Okay, and I make a decent living. This is not for us. Why is there buildings being allowed to be made, but there's no subsidized housing? Where is the subsidized housing? I want everybody to go home or go on your phones right now and look up where is the subsidized housing in Sunset Park. There isn't it. There's probably about 20 buildings, and you know what? They're owned by corporations. They're not. They're not for us. Not so for we us. have to fight for that. If, we we, if our elected official doesn't want to fight for it, then we do. And that's by coming here and speaking up and doing your research and looking it up and fighting, taking the day off or doing whatever you have to do to come here to show them what we fight for, what we believe in and how we won't be for. Industry City is not for Sunset Park. It's for what they're trying to take away from Sunset Park. I want to still be able to live here and have my kids be here and have my family here. And a lot of us can't do that anymore. Okay? So if you guys don't fight, there's nobody left. Buenas noches a todos. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Cabina Rodríguez y vengo representando el Comité de Ayuda a la Comunidad de nuestra Iglesia de Perpetuo Socorro. He vivido más de 20 años en este vecindario. Y por eso estoy totalmente en desacuerdo sobre la resonificación. Eso. 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 Y quiero aclarar que, que no es que esté en contra del desarrollo de la comunidad. Exactamente. Lo que yo estoy en contra es sobre la, el desplazamiento y la exclusión. Cuando digo exclusión, me refiero a una anécdota que me contó un señor que andaba buscando apartamento aquí en la 39, entre 39 y 38. Y en la renta le pedían 2,800 dólares. Y llegó uno de Manhattan con más posibilidades económicas que él y a él lo excluyeron y no le de, dieron el apartamento a él estamos harto de que no excluyan más aún hubo una reunión en, en un grupo de la señora Gloria Espinal y desde el México llamó una familia que tuvo que irse porque no podía pagar la renta porque estaba sola. Esa joven, la hija de la señora, nació aquí y tuvo que irse a lidiar con algo desconocido para ella. Y, y eso es ahora. ¿Qué será cuando resonifiquen a, eh, Industria City? No vamos a tener que ir. Y yo se lo digo, yo soy una mujer que abogo, que abogo por los derechos humanos. Y si es una cosa que me reviente el hígado, es yo ver que rico que solamente quiere el poder, siempre quiere tener, eh, eh, tener el pobre abajo. Y ya, y ya es hora de que nosotros como, como moradores de aquí, de son separ, se nos quite la venda. Ahorita no era necesario haber esa presentación ahí. ¿Por qué? Porque la comunidad es que manda. 
No hay en nuestro concejal, con todo el respeto que se merece, es uno. Y nosotros somos todos. Y si, él, y si él vino a escuchar a la comunidad, tenía que haber escuchado a la comunidad y no lo escucharon. Otra cosa quiero decir, que en la comunidad... A, tenían que hacer un consenso con todos nosotros, con toda la comunidad, porque la comunidad no son 50 ni 100, la comunidad somos todos, y aquí había hambre de expresarse, hambre de decir lo que uno siente, y no nos dejaron. Entonces no hay democracia. ¿Cuál, cuál es la democracia que tenemos? Y entonces, ¿quién nos lo está representando? Si elegimos nuestro concejal es para que nos represente. Pero si un solo está de acuerdo con la resonificación y todos nosotros estamos en desacuerdo, ¿a quién hay que escuchar? ¿No todos vamos a estar equivocados? Entonces, ¿dónde está? ¿Cómo piensan? ¿No todos nosotros podemos estar equivocados? ¿O ¡Oh, sí? No. ¡No! Ah, pues entonces, eso es lo que yo digo. Tenemos que que se nos quite la venda, tenemos que luchar por nuestro derecho, por nuestros intereses. Es el colmo, no están relegando a un quinto plano, están sacando a nuestros inmigrantes. Y para el colmo también nos quieren sacar de son cepal. Es el colmo y no nos vamos a dejar. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos.
Shame! 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 Y díganle lo que están haciendo. Están Oye. a favor, en contra de la comunidad. Así que llamen a Minchaca, llamen al precinto 72. Otro miembro de la comunidad que quiere decir al corazón. Come up to the mic. Come up to the mic. Woo. So please clear the way. If you are going to stay, take a seat. If you're not, take, get away from the staircase. Otro miembro de la comunidad que tiene algunas palabras? Any other community member that want to say some words? Yeah, give it up! take direct action and, and, and organize and be unified and shutting this shit down and saying that this is some bullshit and that we know what we want, we want no rezoning, we want no concessions and I hope this is a lesson for us that when we organize and we take direct action we can address the issues that Carlos was talking about, about housing, about education, about all these things. If we take direct action and we can build our power, we, we can do amazing things and we don't need industry city for that. We don't need I've been living in this neighborhood almost 35 years. And when, and when I moved here, it was nothing but abandoned buildings and abandoned factories. Well, Mike. So now we, the, the Hispanic neighborhood has been here working with their families, bringing up their children here. Now everybody wants to come and build here and build all these condos and, and, and these high-rise uh, buildings here and telling the people that have the buildings here, that the building, the brownstones are no good, that they need to sell cheap now. Because the brownstones that they have is not worth a dime. And, and this is wrong. You know, and we don't need no rezoning here. No, we no. don't! We don't, need, we don't need no more movies here. We, we don't need don't. no more hotels here. We don't need that here. We need jobs. We need education. And we need to stick together, work together, and keep this neighborhood yeah. alive. no se vende! no se vende! Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Jorge. Hey. Jorge hey. I live here in, in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, at Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Uh, my neighbors are Doña Gabina, who you just heard very movingly here speak. And I just want to be very brief and short. Um, I know Carlos very well. Um, in 2014, when he was the first Mexican-American elected to the New York City Council, uh, I was very proud to work in that office with him um, because I saw what a big difference a working city council office could do. Um, and it started with who, who we let in the door. 
Um, the prior city council member, unfortunately, used to ask people, are you a citizen? Can you vote for me? And if you weren't able to do that, you couldn't get in the door. Carlos opened the door for people like me, like my family, that maybe because of a broken immigration system can't vote, but live here, have roots here, and have power in this community. And you just heard and saw and witnessed what it looks like when this community exercises that power. Yeah. And so I gotta tell you, as someone that looked up to Carlos, as someone that really respected his leadership, I was disappointed to yeah. see on Mexican Independence Day someone try to come up to this mic and sell out his community. Shame on Carlos. I'm sorry. This community has power. And if it takes us a new city council member or a new mayor, we're gonna make our voices, our vision, led by people like Elizabeth, who've been thinking about this since before I was born, get implemented. So thank you for apologizing for your rights. Thank you for speaking up. Shema Carlo! Shema Carlo! Friends, we know how this is gonna go, okay? Industry City, our way, they're calling it. Industry City, our way. There is, this, there is no industry city our way. There's only our way, okay? Yep. And how this happens is they come up with a plan where they show us shiny things like a vocational school, like reduced retail, like no hotels, and what happens? Step by step, those promises get forgotten. Step by step, those promises get watered down. Are we gonna let that happen? No! Whose committee is this? Hello everyone, um, I believe in this community since 2008 when I came to this country and I lost my first summer job that I signed up for to pay for um, um, my uh, college due to industry city coming here. I was working at a factory and they had to relocate to New Jersey. Most of those factories over there where I used to work, they had to relocate to New Jersey just because rent was too high. And as myself, other people in all other neighbors, my brother lost his job due to the same reason. Um, my friend, uh, my friend, my best friend's dad, um, after 25 plus years working here, um, he now has to either quit his job or relocate to New Jersey because his company is moving fully by the end of uh, October. So um, I'll say it in Spanish now. Um, yo estoy viviendo en esta comunidad desde el 2008 y perdí mi, mi primer uh, trabajo de verano gracias a Industry City porque la compañía en la que estaba trabajando se tuvo que mudar a New Jersey porque la renta estaba muy cara y como lo, lo perdí yo mi trabajo, así lo han perdido otras personas que conozco, lo perdió mi hermano, um, lo, 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 posiblemente lo pierda el papá de mi amiga que tiene más de 25 años trabajando en una compañía que está um, en, el, en el área porque la compañía se tiene que re relocalizar hacia New Jersey. So, vamos a decirle no a la resonificación, no porque no queremos mejoría para nuestra comunidad, pero porque queremos algo que sea de beneficio para todos los que vivimos aquí en la comunidad. Gracias. Hello everybody, I'm at the Sunset Park Railroad, and I just want to let you all know that as of today, I'm leaving the Democratic Party and going to the Green Party. Uh, here Carlos has been representing the Democratic Party as our council member and he has done nothing for this community. He, That's did, right. he did this with Fifth Avenue Committee. He had to deal with them to rebuild so-called affordable housing on the corner of 51st and 4th Avenue where uh, a group of neighbors got together and they, then when we did get together and we finally said we want in on the discussion, then they suddenly said, well, we'll give you a bigger library. This is nothing new. This is a person who majored in the theater. He's been putting on an act for a long time. Came in as a proud Latino, but all he's been doing is getting ready to stab us in the back, because that's what he's doing. As soon as he's, his term is up, he could have simply said, let the next council member decide. But no, we have to see where the money goes. We have to follow the money, because I guarantee you, he's not doing this for the community. He's doing this for himself. Five minute speech.
speech, I'm going to try to boil it down to the highlights. Um, I live up the block. I live two blocks away. I've been in this neighborhood for uh, 12, 13 years. Uh, in 2012, 2013, I had a studio um, in Industry City. I was a sub lesser. I, I, I rented my studio from a nonprofit that rented from IC. Um, they started to get news from Industry City that Industry City was going to uh, raise the rent. And IC kept telling the, um, the nonprofit people that, that things could be negotiable and possi possibly they, they could work things out. And so they kept having meetings and going back and forth. Um, and our nonprofit was trying to make, make things work for us, but it was taking a, it, it was, it was like a game, you know, it, 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 they get pushed and pulled back and forth. Um, and this went on for months, with Industry City giving no clear answers. At the same time, they started to directly contact individual artists, telling individual artists, we can work something out with you. We can give you a deal, and we can give you a deal. But, it would, but, they, but they wouldn't work with us as a group, so then we, we the artists, tried to come together and meet as a group with Industry City without the nonprofit. IC gave us all these promises as well. It was with this sort of push-pull back and forth. Um, and yeah, they, they, they would promise to show us possible spaces that we could have, possibly rent together on a long-term lease. Um, what ended up happening was that they would take us individually on tours of their studios, which would cost two to four times as much rent as our pr present studios. All of this, by the way, was basically breaking our leases. All of our, the, the papers that we had signed were just disregarded. Um, only a couple of my former art, art studio neighbors could afford to, to move. Um, but, but the rest of us, over time, just became disillusioned and left. Um, a lot of people left for the Bronx. A lot of them just moved out of the city entirely. Um, so it just, it, 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 okay. It's understandable that, that a company wants to make money, but there have to be ethical ways to do it. This company, oh yeah, I forgot to say, it turned out, we, we learned in this whole process that they had done this exact thing with at least three other studios. So there were th like at least three groups of artists with 30 to 50 artists who had been displaced in this way um, through f false, false, n false negotiations. Um, it was just, it was all a lie. Um, it's clearly the company's M.O. Um, and I just find it incredibly offensive that this same company can turn around and claim to be for the arts. I think it's, it's a big, it's, it's the biggest lie that, that they put out, out there. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they didn't just kick us out, they wasted our time in doing it. Um, I find it, I find it, it, it important to, to point out too that this community, it's incredibly underserved in public arts funding. We should be getting more public arts funding than we do. Yeah. And so, for, we're starved. We are starved for opportunity. We're starved for space. We're starved for exposure. We don't need to just roll over and give new permits to companies that cannot demonstrate that they truly benefit the community. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to just take them at their word. We have seen their actions again and again, and they show the truth about this immoral and greedy company that has no real regard for the community around them. Thank you. Give it up. Gracias. La compañera enfrentó un poco sobre su su experiencia en Industry City como inquilina. Fue desplazada del espacio que tenía ahí. Ella es una artista. 
Y no nada más ella, pero también otros vecinos que tenían espacios de arte ahí adentro de Intisu City. Y ahora no tienen dónde trabajar. Y esto es lo que está sucediendo con muchos de los trabajadores que tenían mucho tiempo aquí en la comunidad. Hi, I just want to share some quick information. One mic. Hola. I just want to share some quick information. I have the uh, executive summary of the 197A plan. If you don't know what that is, our community board spent 20 years developing this plan. That is very thorough, hundreds of pages about how they want the industrial waterfront to be developed. It is very, very thorough. It talks about economic development, transportation, environment, public health, open space waterfront access, housing, community facilities and services, and historic preservation. This is just one line that I'm taking from this summary, and the whole thing is hundreds of pages long. We would like to discourage large-scale retail and office development on the Sunset Park waterfront in order to maximize industrial development and employment opportunities. There's a section about historic preservation. We would like to support the creation of a maritime and industrial museum on the waterfront to promote awareness of Sunset Park's maritime and industrial past and the important contributions its immigrant communities have made to the local and regional economy. We built this community. We're not reflected in Industry City. It's not for us. It wasn't made. It's not for us, and we know that. So. This information, I would urge you to reach out to the community board and try to find this information. Do reading yourself because they spent 20 years, our community members spent 20 years developing this. We have been making demands for so long and they haven't been hearing us. So we, we know what we want and we stand by it. Yes. She said it's very true. I'm on the community board, <laughs> and I can say that the chair of the community board is with Intrusy City, City, unfortunately. So please call Cesar Zuniga and all the members of the board and make sure that you tell them that you don't want rezoning in our community. Woo! <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Maria Roca, Princess of Sunset Park, and two th I'm just going to talk about two things very short that were totally left out of that presentation. Hold up, hold up. Gente, Hello. Si, si se van, se pueden ir en silencio, por favor. If you leave, in, you can leave in silence and respect people who are speaking. Okay. So two things were not even talked about or covered here. One of them is that the Industry City Campus, what they own nowadays, what they bought and still own, is half empty. Half of the square footage is empty. Why can't you make all these miracles happen in that other half that is sitting there empty? The educational piece, perfect for that empty space that you're talking about. Whether it's a university, whether it's a high school. So that is a, a mute issue. Besides that, there is the other building, the old federal building number two what is now known as Liberty View, where on that first floor there is the micro center store, and that is also half empty, half empty. So there's plenty of square footage available right now to do what they say they need to do and why they need the rezoning. So right there, you know that this is all a lie. The square footage doesn't lie, it exists, it's real. There's another point, another issue left out of that presentation, and that is the additional parking spaces that they want to put in. Parking spaces that means cars coming in, cars going out. And I believe if my numbers are somewhat correct, correct me someone here if I'm wrong, something like 10,000 new spaces for parking to support this retail, that they, additional retail, to support the new employees. What happened to taking the bus and the subway? What happened to being uh, a climate, um, climate responsible company? A company that is here to help to preserve, to
to, be, to add to resiliency. I'm leaving you with those thoughts. Those are, those are, those are realities, not statistics pulled out of some hat. Third, to the Carpenters Union, I don't know if anybody here, if someone still left. I suggest you go back to the leadership of the Carpenters Union and tell them that next time that you come with a, an illuminated truck to advance your agenda of yes to the rezoning or something, that you do not hire a diesel powered generator to light up your sign. So, you're talking out of two sides of your mouth. You are for work, you're for resiliency, you're for making this city a greener city, and then you park a truck outside there spewing diesel fumes out the back to illuminate a sign. So, I just leave you with those thoughts. Thank you very much. We have an open mic. Anyone else want to share? They think? Everyone's welcome here. You want to say hi? Yeah. Yeah, Good the for star. It. Why do you, why do you want the reason? The rezoning is bad because other people from other countries will come and they might um, be part of the empty city because some people across the world still work in empty city even though And I want to stay here because there's lots of stuff to do in this neighborhood. Yes. And everything is, um, everyone is so nice, so we should stay in this neighborhood yes. and fight for sense of power. ¿Alguien más quiere compartir? Somebody else. Uh, Jocelyn is our number one cheerleader. Um, anybody else wants to share? Give it up to all of you for staying. Yes. Muy bien. We demonstrated that we have power and no decisions will be taken without our voice being in the room. Okay? Yep. So ninguna. <laughs> Vamos a cerrar la noche y quiero que se queden con un mensaje positivo porque es importante eh, que entendamos eh, que hoy tuvimos una buena, una buena noche porque no. Le demostramos al concejal que ninguna decisión se puede tomar sin, nosotros, sin las voces de nosotros en el lugar. Así que buenas noches, lleguen a su casa bien. Uh, get home safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.